for Italy, Yannick Borel for France, and it is Matthias Henkelman, our referee for the first two of nine legs. You'd have to favour the French for the gold medal here, uh, but you can never write off an Italian fencing team. <laughs> of any kind. Now it looks to me like Andrea Santorelli is luring Yannick Borel into distance at the moment and uh, he's trying to pick him up with this circular cease bind. Uh, it's been successful twice. Uh, in fact, that time he ended up in a cutover as Borel was trying to escape. Still luring uh, Yannick Burrell on, but uh, at that time Burrell played a dummy, threw a little fake attack out. That stopped Santorelli in his tracks, and then he launched the real attack. Promising start to this gold medal match. Really still trying to lure Burrell into attacking. Oh. Santorelli with final word in the first. Five, four, we go to the second. And it will be Garozzo for Italy, Grumier for France. Well, it's... Uh, early in the match, but you have to say this could be uh, quite a telling bout. As they were lining up to come out and there was a hint of nervous tension in the eyes of Enrico Garozzo. I would imagine. I've been seeing reports about an injury um, in the comments from some of the French fencing fans um, throughout the day. Do you know anything about that? I haven't heard anything. What, to their Epe team, you mean? To um, Grumier, sorry. I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Did have a word with the doctor earlier on. He did say that he had treated, I think, an ankle, perhaps, for one of the French teams. So perhaps it was Grumier. Well, well Grumier was down in the uh, Switzerland match, um, getting some magic spray, but it didn't look like anything that prevented him from 
you know, being himself. And it was his, it was his back ankle. And then we'll uh, switch over from the uh, preliminaries hall to um, to here. I mean, we're all effectively in, in one big hall, but this is a, a feature podium piece at one end of it. And we moved over from the previous stream. Up time to just nip down to the cafeteria, and uh, non-combativity called for the second period. And uh, telling, well, clearly both these fencers knew that this was a big one, and. Uh, chose not to take any risks so we go straight to the third um yeah I, s I, I had a little chance to go to the cafe and grab a cold bottle of water and i bumped into hughes obrey the uh french epe coach and he looked at me and he went hello how are you and i said i'm very well hughes how are you he said i'm very good and he looked really excited really pumped up and he said are you enjoying the fencing <laughs> that was a nice a nice way of putting are you going to enjoy watching my team win tonight? Well, here is Paolo Pizzo, who apparently will have something to say about that, and he will face Jean-Michel Lucenet in the third after a call of non-combativity in the second. And Pizzo crouched over. What, what is the the thinking behind that? It's just his style. It's just his style of fencing. The Epe is the purest uh, form of sword fighting. First one to hit. And uh, he's over calling the referee over. Right, and uh, the referee's pointed something out. Oh, ha Hughes Obrey's pointed something out in the uh, Italian box, and it's that there's one extra coach in there. They should only have two. Okay, the head coach, the lead coach, and the assistant, and there was a third one sitting in the box, so the referee's just uh, adjusted that. Yeah, it's uh, the purest form of um, fencing, Epe. First one to hit. So you tend to put as much effort into avoiding getting hit as you do into getting a hit on your opponent. And I told you how pumped up uh, this Italian was. So he launches into a flesh attack. So because it's because it's all about um, trying to score without being hit yourself, you do see some contrasting styles. We've got uh, Jean-Michel Lucenet on the right in a sort of more classic, uh, certainly French style position. More upright, hand stays very still. Whereas Pizzo is a bit more of a, an energy player, a, a, bit like the, a bit like the Swiss fencers sometimes. They 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 tend to fence in the uh, non-classical. from a, a foil background as uh, Lucenet studies the ship for the French. Coming from a foil background, I, I, I went into my very first uh, commentary for the FIE with some trepidation about uh, my lack of knowledge and, to be honest with you, my um, lack of appreciation of uh, both Epe and Sabre. 
And uh, Paolo Pizza was a great introduction to uh, the, the nuances and the specialities of men's epo. Uh, he went on and won the World Championships in Catania, which was my first uh, stint in the commentary box for the International Federation. And it, what an introduction that was. <laughs> Indeed. In his hometown as well. He won the World Championships in his hometown of Catania. We're in the third, so our target score here is 15. Fencing at the team matches have uh, three fences in each team plus a reserve. A reserve uh, can be brought in to replace one fencer but can then be taken back out again and the original fencer replaced for their third match. Uh, but it's an accumulator. The first two fences come onto the piece and they fence up to a target score of five. The next two come on and they adopt that score and go up to ten and so on and so forth. So basically the target score is um, five times whatever leg you're in. But frequently we see with foil and epe that time does in fact play a, a factor in these matches, don't they? Well, yeah, and with epe you tend to get uh, calls of non-combativity and the fences are allowed to use non-combativity as a tactic. They don't want to ship too many hits, they'll spoil the fight. Uh, but what then happens is the referee will call halt after a minute of uh, fencing without any hits and this rolls straight into the next period. This contrast in styles, it, it could be boiled down to one very simple um, comparison. Lucene is playing a percentage game. Minimize the risk. And uh, the Italian, Pizzo, is playing more of a, a gambling game. He, he, is, he is presenting opportunities for the Frenchman to hit, um, but he's moving at such speed that those opportunities are very small, very short. Uh, but uh, you've got to say that uh, that was a good a good leg for the French. Absolutely. 11 there for Lucene, 8 for Palo Pizzo, and the lead has swung the other way. France now up by 2, 15, 13 going into the fourth. Andrea Santarelli and Gauthier Grimier. signs of non-combativity here. It's Santarelli that's got to go after this. Grimier will sit there and hold that lead and keep Santarelli at bay. Like he's sort of using a boxing analogy, using sort of jabs to keep Santarelli out of distance. There you go, there's another one. Oh. So see, there's not, that's not a real attempt to hit, that's just to stay away from me, stay away from me. Coming up on a minute gone. There we go. Non-combativity will be called. That will do it. Second non-combativity call in this gold medal match. No change to the score. 13 for Italy, 15 for France. We roll into the fifth. Palo Pizza is back on and he will face Yannick Borrell, the Man Mountain. Well, two bouts of non-combativity from 
Kautia Grumier, and uh, maybe that is an indication that he's trying to avoid aggravating his yeah, yeah. So an ankle injury perhaps or he's he is not inter tactical. interestingly he is not closing he is in uh, the seventh leg and it is Lucene and Burrell who follow him Burrell closing well Burrell knows he's up against a bit of a firecracker here so he's uh, taking the fight to Pizzo across the six weapons and you look ahead 40 days or so to the Olympic Games there, there are perhaps two standout favourites for individual gold one of them is Gautier Grumier the other one just incidentally I would say is uh, Sofia Villacaya who is really the complete package when it comes to women's sabre uh, but she has some challenges from a couple of the French fences and uh, of course Olga Carlan and uh, Mario Zagunis. But Gautier Grumier on his day is unstoppable. He is absolutely head and shoulders above the rest. Funny thing is though, it's not very often his day. <laughs> he t for some reason there's something that happens and either he, he's enjoying it and he gets on with it and he's unbeatable or he's not having a good day and he kind of shrugs his shoulders and goes, I, I'm not fencing well today, so I'm just not going to put I'm not put the effort in. That sounds really bad. What, was it last season, this season, where on the circuit, the French either had gold or silver in like seven events and with, with six different fencers? Of the eight uh, World Cups and Grand Prix, they had seven different winners they also had minor medals they had silvers and bronze in all of the tournaments and then to uh, just rub salt into the wound of the other nations it was the inaugural European Games in Baku and an eighth different French men's epist won that and uh, for those of you who know your French men's epis, that would be Ivan Trevejo at the tender age of 42, 42, 42. I think he, was. he was either 41 or 42 when he took the gold medal in Baku. Well, world champion last year, Gaze Emre was 41 when he did that. Yeah. Yeah, pretty impressive run of form and a uh, real headache for the uh, selectors for the Olympics, of course, because uh, with eight different winners in the previous season, uh, how do you select exactly. three for the individual and one extra for the team? I think uh, the, sh the short answer to that was that Gautier Grumier was always going to be the first name on the French uh, fencing team's list. Second highest number of uh, qualifiers for the Olympic Games France after a disappointing London 2012. Russia have got the, the full package. Two women's foilers, two men's sabreurs to go in the individual and then teams in all of the other events. And you've got to say, um, not just because of the volume of fences but because of the talent, Russia are the favourites to be top of the fencing medal table in Rio. Korea and Italy both had a pretty good showing in London. Korea so top of the table, right? Um, I think they might have been second where they were tied with Italy, but did they not factor in this year? Or is there, are their results this year not that promising? Korea or Italy? Korea, Korea. Well, the Koreans uh, haven't had the best four-year cycle, for sure. Like lots of individual uh, medals, but uh, as teams, they're not... Uh, they haven't done quite so well. 
Well, 10 there for Burrell in the fifth. And eight. Is that eight, no, nine uh, for Pizzo. So a net gain of one there for France. In that leg, go to the sixth. It is Garazzo and Lucene. Double to open the sixth. With the crowd at the uh, top of the French men's epee lineup, wasn't it? Uh, was it Ulrich Roberry who retired earlier this season? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Not selected in the French team. I can't remember off the top of my head who the French team is, but uh, he wasn't one of them. I would imagine it's probably the four that are here. Doing a bit of a dress rehearsal. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? A dress rehearsal at the European Championships. But it is, of course, a dress rehearsal for the Olympic Games.
Decided to leave that one where it was. Oh, we move on. 25 29, we move to the seventh, and as you say, Karen, this is where the the rubber hits the road. Yeah, and um, the French have made a substitution. They've taken Grumier off, and they put on Daniel Girant. Interesting. Well, I think that's. Uh, that probably does confirm that Grumier is not a hundred percent because uh, they didn't want to put him up against the um, energy of Paolo Pizzo. But Pizzo himself is on a minus four indicator, so despite his passion and desire, has shipped four more hits than he's landed. Well, listen, a at this point he is on a plus four, so. Um, surely edging away from the Italians, this French team. And we'd fancy in the last leg, if Burrell's got a four or five hit lead, then he's gonna hold on to it, and he's gonna keep Enrico Garozzo at bay. Well, the French have picked up over the last three active legs, where non-combativity has not been called. They've picked up a point differential in each in each leg. So they're just sort of slowly easing out. First it was two, and then it was three, and now it's four. Now it's five. Well, now it's six. The master tactician, Hughes Obrey. Got his pen and pad out, as always, in the French box, marking down every single hit. Did I not see that he is leaving the French program at the end of the Olympic cycle? That it appears to be what is the case, yep. Yeah. He may well be uh, parting company with the uh, French Federation, and his services will be well sought after. Well, Girant doing the business here in reserve for Gautier Grumier. Pizza run out of steam here. No? Pound Pizza never runs out of steam. <laughs> well, they do decide to leave it there. 34 28. 34 for France. So three there for Pizzo. Five for Girant in reserve for Grumier in the seventh. And now a six point gap. 
Santorelli won in the eighth and penultimate leg to face Jean-Michel Lucenet. Is it, I mean, Santorelli is going to have to get some points back here, isn't he? Yeah, I don't think he's going to go hell for leather. Um, I think he will use the time to try and close the gap. He doesn't... Well, clearly, he's not worried about the target score of 40 here. Um, or he certainly isn't uh, as we go into this eighth leg. But he will want to close that gap up, I would say, at least by three hits. So take it down from a six-hit lead to uh, a three-hit lead. That would be satisfactory job done if he does do that and if you like I think Pizzo left the score as it was so uh, the French have to score an extra hit to try and get to uh, 40 it's 6 to get to the target score and that buys a bit of time for Santorelli but, uh, even in the penultimate leg a double at this stage is, um, is a good outcome for the French Santorelli's game of trying to lure Lucene in is not going to work because Lucene will stay patient and wait for the opportunity just like then. Uh, Santorelli just gets a little bit too close. Lucenay and France will gladly accept those doubles. Slowly eliminating the advantage that was left for Italy. I've often wondered why um, equipment manufacturers brand socks right by the uh, ankle and uh, that's a very good reason. Just there in that replay as we watched a close-up of uh, Jean-Michel Lucenet straightening his weapon. Yeah, which yeah. happens frequently. Good advert for the um, one of the world's top equipment manufacturers, Leon Paul. Sponsors of the French uh, fencing team, in fact. Other equipment suppliers are available. And not for the French team. Well, Santorelli has not only not cut the lead, the lead has grown by one.
that is going to leave Italy in an interesting sort of place. They've got six points to make up, and then five after that, unless time runs out. What is Garazzo going to have to do here? Well, he's got to. He's got to take the fight to Yannick Burrell, and uh, I think this is too big an ask, even for uh, Enrico Garazzo. Burrell uh, is, a, a, is great at containing. He's got a great reach, and actually, you know what? He might not even let Garazzo come after him. He might say, well, we've got a good lead here. I'll, I'll see if I can increase it. Big ask here for Garazzo to try and close this gap. I, I think I might have to, at this point, put uh, Jean-Michel Lucenet forward as man of the match. I mean, he's on a plus four indicator. And put 21 points on the board. And you know, kept, kept things steady in the, uh, in the middle of the order. Yeah, but the other members of the team did their job. Grumier contained in his first two fights. The substitute, the Geron, came on and outscored his opponent by two. He, he was over a little congratulatory fist pump and then straight back to his notebook. coming over to have a word with Hugh Zobry. I think perhaps uh, getting a little carried away with his uh, instructions. So did enough to lure Burrell into attacking there and then just uh, got a hold of his blade and bound it round and hit. Still four down though. And half of the final period's over already. A couple more hits from uh, the Italian and Burrell might start to get a little bit nervous. What's Garazzo doing? Why doesn't he get on with it? Well, he's got bags and bags of time. He doesn't need to take risks until the last 30-odd seconds. His game plan here is to stay in this till the end so that you can launch some, if you like, crazy attacks. We're back to a five-point lead and back to a four-point lead. Garazzo did not need. <laughs> oh. How the flick over the back didn't land. I don't know, but uh, you take them all via Yannick Burrell. And now they're just one hit away from a gold medal at the Torrent 2016 European Fencing Championships in men's team Epe. Nice hit to the floor. Or to the foot there, a low line hit for Garozzo. Professional job done by the French team here. 
They knew they were up against it with the Italians who were well up for the fight. But they've just been solid and they have just taken the European title. 45. 40 it is France who will stand atop the podium tonight. Italy will take the silver. And uh, Ukraine with the bronze. Yeah, our schedule start time for the women's foil team event 